Karen here from Crafty Bit Miss K. I have been absent from the world of YouTube for about a year and a half now. Um, lots of things going on in my private life, global pandemic, you know, that sort of thing. Sort of thing. Um, but I want to come back and I want to first of all say a huge thank you to everybody who has subscribed or continued to subscribe to me over the last year and a half. I've been blown away every time I have a look at videos for me to watch a little message will pop up, up saying how many people have subscribed and I think I really need to get back. Anyway, so here I am. So the reason I'm actually revisiting an old project, because I don't normally do it, is because I had a couple of comments, not recently, but over the last year and a half or so, um, saying uh, one lady said that she couldn't see very well because I was too close. I'm hoping I've got, I've raised my camera up a bit, so I'm hoping that means that you can see more now. And uh, another person said they just couldn't get it, they couldn't do it. So therefore, I feel that my instructions weren't very clear. And when I look back at the video and look at it, you know, that was back in the early days. And, you know, I used to gabble and, and just get really nervous. I'm still nervous, but, you know, I like to think that I can actually explain something now without having to think, well, what do I say? How do I explain this? Anyway, so the project I'm doing is the handbag gift bags that I made. All right, so I've got three here samples. Um, these are going to be going out as presents containing chocolate and eggs and all sorts of goodies because we've got Easter coming up in, in um, a few weeks' time. So basically this is made by using a 12 by 12 sheet of paper and then just some odd bits of card to do the tops, some bits of ribbon, and that's it. They hold quite a lot. It's quite, a, quite roomy in there. The base of it measures seven inches by three inches. Um, oh, I should also say that I work in inches. I work in imperial measurements. I don't. I can work in centimeters. I understand centimeters, but I don't understand enough to convert. Them. I will try again sometime in the future, and I will make sure that I do it in centimeters. Okay. Anyway, so yes, this is what we're making today. So I'm just going to move this right out of the way. I've got a few bits and pieces on my worktop now where I've been working today and I'll try and make a bit of space. Right, so the paper I'm using is this floral and the reason I'm going for a light floral is because when I was making this one it was so hard because even the back of it is, is dark as well and it was just so hard to see where the score lines were. So I'm going for something a bit lighter. So it actually came from the same paper pack as this one did. Uh, you can see it's quite similar and this was from the Stampin' Up! Celebration um, these were some of the freebie papers that came out um, if you spent over a certain amount during January and February but um, obviously that's all finished now so there we go so it's a nice stripy on the back but I'm going to be doing this side as the outside so there's 12 by 12 and then we just need two pieces of card which measure 7 inches by 1 and 3 quarters two circles these are one inch circles um, some very strong magnets there's my magnets there I buy mine from spider magnets which are on eBay they're on Amazon you can probably go direct to their website but I think they're amazing they're really really strong they, they I'm not even gonna try and pronounce the word they call them you know those those really strong magnets and then finally you want this a, a shape it doesn't have to be this one you need a shape for the clasp of the bag okay now I like this one because I like the scalloped edge on it. So this this one came from uh, lots of labels frameless. It's stamping up old ones. They're now retired, and it's the largest one. So if you happen to have that set and you want to use it, it's the largest die. If not, you know they can be oblong or rectangular, or circular, oval, whatever you like. If you've got some nice framelits that you like, or you know some of these layering um, dies. And you like the shape of it use it you know don't just think oh no i must use the one that karen's used i happen to like that one anyway so um there's a little bit of scoring once you've cut out the pieces of card there is no more cutting because the bag is made out of one piece it don't, you don't have to cut it at all so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring back the the card pieces first i don't need the circle so they can go over with the magnets and so my die measures four and three quarters across I'm going to score it at two and three eighths and hopefully if I've got that if I've remembered that rightly yes <laughs> okay and then the two pieces of card where they you take the short bits so this is one and three quarters you just score it down at seven eighths of an inch okay 
Okay, and then the sheet of paper itself um, doesn't really work with directional paper, so this is kind of like a doesn't matter which way up this goes. So we start off with two and a half. Turn that round 180 degrees, so your score line is now over there, and it's two and a half again. Then you turn it around 90 degrees, so your score lines are going across the way now, and you do four and a half and seven and a half. Now before you move from here, you've created a kind of square shape just here. You just want to notch that at six inches. Okay, I'll find out why in just a sec. So let's get rid of the scoreboard because we're done with that now. Now you need a ruler. I've turned my paper around so that my notches are now side on, so they're in there. Okay, and basically where your score lines meet across here, you go from that corner out to the notch. I'm just going to just check, double check that to make sure. That's it, yep, that's better. Okay, and you score a line. Do the same in the other direction where the score lines cross out to the notch. You've created a triangle basically. And that's that. So before we touch those triangles, I'm just going to. wouldn't normally do it with, with paper unless you're making a box of course but I want that nice flat edge at the bottom with a nice crisp corners on the on the bottom of the bag there okay now well you've got the back of your paper face up just pinch where you made those diagonal lines to create that triangle on both sides like so okay and then with the wider score lines kind of like in this direction so your narrow ones are going across so it looks like that down here Actually, you've got to close first. I'm, I'm stepping ahead of myself, doing the next step already. Okay, so basically, while you've got them closed like this, you've got a score line going across here. Okay, that score line needs to meet that folded edge just there. So if I stand up so I can, so I know you can see what I'm doing here. So you just, if you can't find it, put your finger into the corner, bring it up, and then fold it over to meet. I'll just move it out of the way. I'm folding it over, look, to meet the edge of the folded line. And then just use your other hand, the other finger, just to do the line inside. So again, line into the corner, bring it over, bring it down to meet the folded edge there. And then just use your bone folder then just to press out that line nice and sharp. And do the other side with the score line, hold on to it in the corner, bring it out. Bring it down and then finally on this side score line bring it down and then just use your bone folder that's it so you end up with that I'm going to sit down again so I'm not shouting in your ear okay so what we're going to do now is open it out and where that new score line is just here that you created just now we're going to put we're going to glue inside that so if i put that there and where's my ruler so i've got my score line coming down here score line coming down here and that new score line there so this area here needs to be um, stuck down so a little bit of wet glue you don't have to use wet glue i prefer wet glue but you can use your tape runners you can use your double-sided tape here so let's just mark out oops mark out the area that I'm gluing down and then just fold over press it down with your hand and then really really squeeze that glue around so that it sticks down really well providing you haven't used too much nothing's going to come out the top there and do the same on this side sit down 
and then just press it out. Okay, now if you hold it up now, if you just open it up a little bit, if you bring it up now, you're creating the shape of the bag. So we want to stick down these pieces now, that's the next part. You don't have to, I like to. So now if I fold it down flat again, so now it's the fold line here and this line here. You're going to be gluing in that little triangle area there. And then bring it down, press, press, and then again use your bone folder just to spread the glue out. There we go. Oh, I've got glue somewhere. Can't feel it on there though, it must be. Alright, I've got a tip. If you get a little sticky patch on here, on your paper or on your work surface, just use a clean, I've just got a clean pencil rubber here, and just rub away the glue and then it's not it's not sticky anymore okay so you've created a box type base all right put them off to one side for the minute bring in your two strips fold Burnish to create a nice sharp crease on there. And then open them out again and get some glue into them. Alright, bring your bag back, lay this over the top press it down, make sure it's even, press it down again, and then... There we are. So now, you've got the, almost like a clutch bag going on now. So it's time to put the handles on. So I'm just going to grab a pencil and my ruler, and what you need to do is just mark about an inch in from the edge, about halfway up a hole. Now then you can use a cropper doll. I've used a cropper doll before. Got my cropper doll there. I'm going to show you how easy it is hopefully. I'll just get an ordinary hole punch. I like to use a cropper doll but I'm going to use a cropper doll on this one. And it's on the smallest, you know making the smallest hole. That's so nice and easy. I'm going to rub that pencil out in a second. Or, if you haven't got a cropper dial, just use an ordinary hole punch. You do need to wiggle it about a bit because obviously it's a bit thicker, the card. And there we go. So before I go any further, I was a little bit off with my pencil marks. I'm just going to rub them out. And then if you place your bag together like that, use your pencil. Mark where the hole goes on the other side and then you can just punch those holes. So, and then, it's not essential, but I like to check, make sure the holes are nice and even, all right? Now, I love sparkly ribbon. The nearest I've got to sparkly is this one, in this lovely, this is Sea Spice Side Spray, this colour blue. It's beautiful and I'm very, very sad, but it's retiring this year. So I've really got a stock of the card in. I've got extra ink in. I need to get some more ribbon because I absolutely love this. It makes beautiful, it might help if I tell you how big a piece to use. It makes beautiful baby cards, this blue. Right, so my paper, my grid paper is 16 inches wide from the lines to the line. So I'm going to actually go from edge to edge. So it's going to be about 16 and a half. All right, like that. Then start threading your ribbon on. Okay, now you can either tie a knot each, each end here or what I like to do is I just like to tie it together 
and I use a clove hitch granny dot I don't know what it is left over right right over left it creates a, a nice flattish type knot so it doesn't affect the closing of the bag Okay, now I'm just going to trim off those long pieces and then because it does fray, I'm actually going to use my lighter. Oh gosh, I've just touched the my lamp, there we go. Uh, I'm just going to use my lighter just to bind off the end so it doesn't fray anymore. Be very, very careful, obviously you're using paper here. I did set fire to one of the other ribbons when I was doing it, so I've got to be careful. That's it. Right, now just to make that nice and neat so it's not all baggy at the bottom there. Blue dots. And I'm looking for my piercing tool. There it is. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop a little glue dot behind the knot just to hold the ribbon in place so it doesn't move. You turn it so your tied bit is facing the, the, um, the edge of the bag then they don't stick up. Okay, there we are. So let's move that to one side for a sec. My lamp right, oh that's better, I have it on the right and wrong light. Okay, so now I just need my closure, it's going to go there. So what you want to do is just glue down one side, put, put glue, don't glue it to your lamp just yet, but put glue just on one side to start off. So, and then using, the, oh, I've done it again, I keep changing the colour of my lamp, lamp. That's it. So the non-glued side. Just hold it up, offer it up, get your bag in the right place. Offer it up so that it's about halfway. Stick it down and then you can lay it down. Okay, so the final bit is my magnets. <laughs> and I don't know what I've done with my magnets. There they are. Oh my gosh. I'm just going to change my lamp back again. Keep touching the uh, control on it. That's better. All right, glue dots again. So you put glue dot, you've got them both stuck together already. Glue dot, stick them onto your bag. Glue dot onto the other magnet. And then make sure you want, you've got it exactly where you want it. Just give it a little squeeze. Now these, because they're very strong, they'll probably pull the glue dot away. So if you slide it, it comes undone without pulling, pulling off the bag. So Try to use it. That's it. So my hole, not my hole punch, my circle, my circles now. Oh, that's a lot of glue on there. I might just grab, I've got a little bit of kitchen towel over here. I might just grab a little tiny bit and just take a little bit of that off. That's a bit too much. Okay. And I'm just going to stick that. The idea is you're hiding those magnets from little fingers. If you're giving the bag to somebody who doesn't have young children at home, it's not so bad. But I always try to make sure that my bags are nice and secure just in case a child or a grandchild or something gets hold of it. Because the last thing I want is for them to pick the magnet off. And we all know what happens to little tiny objects with little children where they end up. Right, so that's that. Now this one. Obviously try and be a little bit more gentle with the paper. Although once it's stuck down and you've got it laid down, you can push it. So. Okay, once it's all stuck down and secure, 
when you close it nice little snap and obviously we don't want to leave it plain like that so I'm just going to get a bit more ribbon and I'm going to make a bow so two loops bunny ears tie a knot and then just pull your ribbon loops or the tails rather until you're happy with the, the bow I think that one just a little bit bigger and then just make sure you tie it nice and tight that knot is perfect I'll adjust the length of the tie the tails in a minute lay it down flat on your worktop a couple more glue dots I absolutely love glue dots I use loads of them handy little things they are and then I'm going to lift that up just literally a smidgen above where that lump is where the magnet is pop your ribbon on close it down and get my big scissors cut where I want the towel to be that's about right and then again if it's a ribbon that frays which this one is lift it away from the bag so you're not burning your bag and then just quickly make sure your ribbon doesn't fray. Oh, I'm going to, oh, ow, burnt my finger. Okay, there we go. That's it all done. Let's move all this bits out of the way. So there we are. Beautiful gift bag there. And it will take a lot in there. Actually, it does fit over the side here. I just happen to have, I don't particularly like these. Um, dark chocolate gingers, the Thornton's bag. Fits beautifully in there like that or if you're giving it to a little one we can have maybe a couple of mini eggs in there and maybe a chocolate bunny as well again lovely okay or you can put makeup in there perfume in there money in there although <laughs> it's a little bit big to put money in um yeah you can put anything in there you could probably get a little bottle of wine in there i'm not quite sure how long I've seen little miniature bottles that fit inside that. So there we go. So there's my lovely bag. Hopefully the instructions have been a bit more clearer now and that you've been able to see. Okay. So if you like what you've seen and you're not subscribed already, please do subscribe. Like I said at the beginning, I would love really to make the four figures, to make a thousand on my subscribers on my YouTube channel. Um, I won't leave it so long next time. Let's bring all the bags back in, although you can't actually see them looking straight on. I'll get some pictures I'll put at the end. Um, and um, have a lovely day have a lovely crafty day if you do make the bags let me know how you get on um, in the meantime take care and bye for now